One of the big stories at the weekend uh, was how there's now a medicine shortage uh, coming up uh, once again. We talked about this before, uh, and in fact we had uh, one of our own viewers calling up because of his son's uh, shortage uh, when it came to ADHD medicines and mental illness um, medicines in particular. Drug supply crisis, it said uh, in one of the newspapers at the weekend. Half a million patients uh, going to be facing shortages and possibly rationing. Let's talk to Torin Govind, our favourite pharmacist, and find out what's going on out there. Torin, a very good morning to you. Morning, Mike. Yes, we're Monday morning. Uh, no blues here. Right, absolutely good. Well, nice to see you. Um, there's a problem here because we've talked about the uh, the shortages of ADHD medicine uh, in particular in the past. Um, but, you know, of course, a lot of people go, oh, it's all to do with Brexit. It's not really, is it? It's to do with the supply chains. A lot of these, manu a lot of these manufacturers are actually nowhere near Europe. They're outside of, in Asia sometimes, maybe in America. So what's the, what's the story? OK, so medicine shortages have been going on for a while, even before Brexit. Yeah. The supply chain is fragile. We are dealing with the costs, the impacts of infl inflation. We're dealing with the cost of raw materials going up. Um, we are also um, dealing with, you know, wars, global conflicts also have an impact on that. So uh, we're staying positive here, but obviously it is a challenge for us in the pharmacy because we sometimes order medication in. We're spending hours each week trying to source medication and we order it in sometimes and we think it's going to come in and it just doesn't come in at all. Right. Um, and it's also who has to explain that to patients. And as you can probably understand, it can be quite emotional uh, and quite distressing for patients right. when, you know, we are not in control of that. Well, particularly when a lot of this medication is sort of, sort of behavioural, if you like. I mean, it controls people's behaviour um, and stops them from becoming distressed or whatever it is that, they, that they've been prescribed the, the, the medicine for. So it's quite difficult, isn't it? Particularly, as I say, for families, if they've got children who, who are waiting for this kind of medicine and they can't get their hands on it. Because I've spoken to people over the past few months and many of them will say, you know, sometimes you can go from one pharmacy to another and nobody's got it. You know, it's one of those things, and it's, it's happened to me as well, where some, sometimes certain types of medicine are just not available. Absolutely. And we've been saying one of the challenges as well is if you get a prescription, for example, for tablets, um, but I've got capsules in, I can't change that. Um, so we've been saying for a number of years now to the government, let us have that ability so that we don't have to send you back to the doctors right. for a new prescription. So That's there are mad, things that... Now, if I was in hospital, it wouldn't be a problem, but because it's in a community pharmacy, there is a challenge there. So we've been saying this for a little while now. That's one thing that needs to change. But also, I think they need to make it more attractive for manufacturers to, because we don't really have much homegrown manufacture. That's the other challenge here. Right. And why is that then? Has that just been something that's been allowed to, to disappear from Britain? Like, you know, we've got we've we've got we've got manufact we've got pharmacies headquartered in this country. So why are they not making stuff here? Well, the big manufacturers, if you think you're thinking about the costs of them making the products, the workforce as well, that is a challenge. So I think there needs to be more incentives for uh, manufacture here. Um, in terms of pharmacy closures, that's another point, Mike, that we can't miss as well. We've spoken before about the challenges on pharmacies on the high street. And again, that continues to be an issue with the number of pharmacies closing. So this is a mix of patient accessibility to medication because we're not getting the, the medication into the pharmacy pharmacy, but also patients accessing pharmacies because pharmacies are closing due to some of those funding pressures and bureaucracy that we've spoken about yeah. before. I mean, I've often said it would seem to me that the, the NHS should be such a powerful organisation in the world of medicine that they should be able to buy um, from big manufacturers at an absolute knockdown price. But it doesn't seem to work like that. They seem to pay through the nose for almost everything they get. I think it's also the challenge of not it's just the actual ingredients and the drug getting to us on the front line as well. And um, I was over the weekend, I had patients calling me, for example, do you have this in, do you have that in? And we're spending a huge amount of time just checking if we have things in for patients because they are ringing yeah. around and, and that you've spoken just then about that. It is a challenge and mm. I do feel for our patients. Yeah, absolutely right. Just one final one. Um, the least surprising story of the weekend came out uh, in a Telegraph. Uh, Rebecca Hilsenrath, who I'd never heard of before, but apparently she's the health ombudsman, said that clapping the NHS during the pandemic may have had dangerous consequences by insulating it from criticism. Well, I could have told them that. I think, you know, clapping uh, was one thing. I don't feel like claps have, uh, have really paid off for, for anything, Mike, in terms of it's hard working um, in, in healthcare. Uh, but that doesn't make us immune and we always have that duty of candour and if things go wrong we have to 
say that things have gone wrong, yes. and that's to me fundamental as a healthcare professional. Yeah, I, I don't agree with clapping people for doing their jobs. You know, I used to turn up at home. You know, once I was uh, able to move out of London every now and again and demand that my children clap for me because uh, I'd been working all week, and of course they didn't do that because they thought that was a stupid thing to do, which was a, it was a stupid thing to do. I mean, just watching Boris clapping, you know, um, and it had absolutely no effect at all other than uh, to make it impossible to criticise the NHS, and it needs to be criticised because it's not very good. Well, I think we've highlighted here some of the things that need to change. So that ability with even medication for us to be able to support the patients better. So I think it's about listening to practitioners who are actually working on the ground and also listening to what patients need as well. Yeah, absolutely. Torrin, good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Torrin Govinda, uh, pharmacist. We've got another voice note from Lindsay on the BBC. Hi, Mike. Great show as ever. Um, just wanted to say I cancelled my TV licence when I realised how much Gary Lineker was being paid. Um, can't stand the man, refuse to pay me licence and watch any live TV, TV because of that. Um, and I think he's, he's, the BBC as a whole just needs scrapped. It's not fit for purpose, it's biased and it just needs gone. Absolutely. Listen, couldn't agree more, Lindsay, with you. Uh, almost as many people agree with you as agree with the fact that Keir Starmer's taking the country in the wrong direction uh, and he's making an absolute horlix of everything. Because he really is. Uh, how about this from uh, JT? Morning, Mike. Hope you're well. This is a question I've been asking for a long time. How much does it cost the taxpayer in wages and expenses to get all the politicians in one room for the day, i.e. Parliament? I'm willing to bet it's an eye-watering amount considering the money they get paid. Um, and Mick says the Speaker and Whips do not want hotels specifically from MPs due to the risk of scandals because of their behaviour. But if they can't watch themselves and look after themselves, then what is the point? Absolutely nothing ridiculous.